Welcome to Sigbaggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do an audio install on this freewheeler back here. If you watched a couple of two, three, four videos back, we actually got the freewheeler in here and we did a vector batwing fairing. Now the freewheeler just basically kind of has a road king front end on it and uh, this customer wanted to put a batwing fairing on it and vector offers those and they also offer some audio as well that you can purchase and this stuff came already pre-installed in the fairing and these fairings just bolt on just like a, a quick detached windshield would on the front of the freewheeler now since the fairing came with the six and a half inch rockford fosgates we're pairing it up with the exact same speaker that we purchased separately um, that we're going to put in the lower fairings so he'll have four six and a half inch speakers now with that we're going to be adding a stetson 404 amp this little bitty guy right here these little stetson 404s these things slam and just to clarify in case you guys are wondering you're following along and you want to do this to your free ruler as well these are the p1650s from rockford fosgate like i said this is the iron line 404 from stetson and then from vector fairing the uh, P165s are already installed. And then in the middle here, we have a Rockford Fosgate Bluetooth receiver, and that is the Rockford Fosgate PMX-1. Now the PMX-2 is available through Vector as well, and I think there's not a whole lot of differences in them. It's the same size. I think it has a bigger screen and it's also color. So uh, you can choose either one, but the back of that thing, luckily for us, has RCA output. So we don't have to do any line output converting and all that stuff. We can plug the amp straight into that and then uh, get everything fired up, get the speakers hooked up to the amp. Now this install is gonna be just pertaining to the freewheelers and if you have some style of uh, bat wing fairing. I know there's other companies out there that make these fairings, but like I said, this one's from Vector. So we're gonna move the camera over here. We're gonna grab some wrenches and stuff and uh, we're gonna take the outer fairing off of this, of course, get the seat off and side covers off. We're gonna start figuring out where we want to mount everything. There's no tray, obviously, like you would find in a normal batwing fairing um, we're going to get everything tore apart see what we need to do and then we'll go from there okay so we've taken the outer fairing off the vector fairing very simple three screws one two three pull the outer fairing off and of course your windshield bolts get that out of the way now when i first opened this up vector had all of this stuff nice and zip tied in a nice little clean package right here in the middle and of course i had to cut the zip ties and move some stuff around and you can see on the back of the little rockford unit here we've got some outputs front and rear the uh, rear one is a base output or a rear output so that has to be selected inside the unit which we've already done that selected over there to just rear line output just like a standard output instead of base but these are right here coming off the unit we've kind of tucked those off to the side now what's left that i haven't pulled up just yet is the antenna and then it looks like just the uh, auxiliary port wire over here because it's pretty long so they they uh, took the time to zip tie this all up and what's genius that i've seen in here is they actually use hot glue on the inside of this at least that's what it looks like to hold everything down and that's what we're going to be using today because we have a uh, monster hot glue gun and uh, we're going to start moving some wires around so one thing to look for when you're getting ready to mount your amp now our 400 watt amp it's it's pretty small but mounting it right up here where i thought that it might go you got to test fit the fairing put it back on there when i test fit the fairing uh, the top of it was hitting the amp and it wouldn't allow it to push all the way on so that's why we took the wires apart we kind of moved them off to the side instead of piled up here in the front so you can just kind of score that hot glue with a knife and we can move the antenna to one side and the black power wires to the other and we can actually scoot it back even farther and that'll give us a nice flat plate right here on top of this fiberglass to mount that amp um, it's pretty genius uh, the hot glue idea is actually really genius so we may end up using that because there's no tray in here like you would normally have on a street glide to mount an amp so i'm just going to cut the camera i'm going to start moving a little bit more of these wires and a little bit more test fitting on the amp but that's just where we're at right now uh, i'll cut the camera back on when we get everything moved and i'll show you how we did it okay so we got the wires up off here the uh, hot glue kind of cleaned up and we pushed the wires off to the side and of course later on we'll clean all of this back up i don't want to leave any of this wires messy like this but we've pre-fit our amp in here and uh, we'll probably end up using the same method i've got uh, three edges that i can add glue to to mount this where this isn't going to uh, vibrate loose or anything and i've pre-marked it with a sharpie where i want to actually add but with that right there i can actually get the fairing pushed on and i've got enough room right here 
to clear and this isn't interrupting with the outer fairing. So next thing we're gonna do is move the camera over and we're gonna pull the tank, get our power ground ran. We're gonna get everything uh, for the lowers, the, the left and right speaker wires. We're gonna get those ran up. And once we get all of our wires ran up here, then we can you know trim everything down to fit and uh, get it installed on the amp. Very next thing we're gonna do is get the tank removed so we can run our power and ground down to here to the battery. You've got two bolts right here underneath your seat right at the base of the tank. You pull this little rubber cover off up here. You've got a bolt here and a bolt on the other side. Once you get all four bolts pulled, you can lift up on the back of the tank and you've got a wire right down here that you have to unplug. This goes up to your gauges, which we'll show you that in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the front one. Remove the back one. Do the exact same thing on the other side. Right here next to your ECM module, you're going to have a black plug. Go ahead and disconnect that. You've got a overflow tube here. Disconnect that. Right here, we have to disconnect the fuel line. Push up on the silver. Pull down on the black. You will lose a little bit of fuel when you do that. Just like that. Mop up that little bit of gas you're disconnected there. Right up here, you're gonna have a wire. Pull that down. Little quick disconnect there. Kind of fish that down. Push in on the end of it, disconnect it. There's your little quick disconnect. Now from here, you're disconnected from the bike. So we can lift up on the front, lift up on the rear. We're just gonna lift it up. Make sure you have a soft spot to put it. Uh, we just lay a blanket or something down, or maybe you got a soft table set up where you can set this down. I'm going to lift straight up. Once you have the tank removed, it's going to expose your wire harness right here. So we're just going to unclip this all the way down. If you have ABS, you'll have ABS lines coming in on the right side over here. You just kind of pull those away from the from the shroud, and this will all come off. Get that out of the way. That exposes our wire harness, and that's where we're going to run our power and our ground from our fairing. We'll put a quick disconnect in here somewhere, and then run the power and the ground down to the battery. Next thing we're going to do is take out the two T40s here for your battery truck. ECM, it's got two tabs on each side. You're gonna basically pull those out and lift that up from the rear. Pull that off to the side. Right here, you just have a little Christmas tree prong in the top of this. Pull that, just like that. Now your tray is free. You just kinda of have to wiggle it depending on how many wires and what other stuff you got going on under here. It needs to be pushed forward and then you can pull it straight up just like that. Now you've exposed your battery and uh, you can get to your power and your ground. So basically from here, we're gonna loose lay our power and ground. Basically just meaning we're just loose laying it in here just to fab up to see what kind of length we may need so we don't waste a bunch of wire. Lay it in here. The biggest thing with this is making sure that you have enough slack in between the handlebars and the fairing and the bike. Because when you turn your handlebars, if this is super tight going through there, you're gonna pull something off and you're gonna have a bad day. So we don't wanna do that. Uh, we're gonna leave plenty of slack here in the middle. And if we end up wasting a little wire at the end of the day, no big deal. So from here, I'm just gonna loose lay my power, my ground, get everything up in the fairing, and then we'll start working on getting these speaker wires from the lowers up to the fairing. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the video. I just want to take a quick second to stop and tell you how much I appreciate the hell out of every single one of you. If you could just take one second to hit that like, hit that subscribe, tell your friends about us. That's what keeps us coming out here to the shop and creating the free content. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. All of our videos are absolutely free all of the time. We don't have any secret squirrel websites that you can go subscribe to and pay us money so you can watch certain videos, all that. Our videos are always free all the time. And in order for us to come out here and make more content, we really, really need your help when it comes to just a simple like and a subscribe and also tell your friends about us. Jump on over to Facebook, check us out over there at SIK Baggers and on Instagram, join up over on the Facebook group and become a part of an awesome community. We got a great group of people over there that really like helping each other. So make sure to check us out Facebook and Instagram. But I just want to stop the video real quick to tell you guys, thank you. Now I'm gonna let you get back to the video. So to save a little bit of time, I cut the camera and ran the wires, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. Of course, we made two leads for the positive and negative on the battery back there. We ran them up the tray 
and they come out right here we use this little vinyl sheathing stuff here that covers the positive and negative until we get it into the fairing that just hides that red and black our speaker wires come right up here they come over from the fairing they meet at the neck run straight up to the neck runs up the neck and everything comes out right here underneath the handlebars we're going to run this over and eventually bend this up drill a hole in the fairing and poke that through this right here is where you need to make sure that you have plenty of slack so when we pull all of this up into the fairing we are going to come back around here and pull some of this wire down so when we turn these handlebars this doesn't pull on these wires so you can pull your slack down and tuck it up in here next to your fork we zip tied it off here as a pivot point and then all of our slack is on the other side of that so we can turn the handlebars and not pull these wires now up here inside the fairing we're going to have to drill holes for those wires to come up now i don't have a grommet big enough and the kit definitely doesn't come with one big enough to provide enough space for the speaker wires and the power and ground wire but i do have rubber grommets big enough to accommodate the speaker wires like that and then of course our power and ground so we'll probably end up doing two holes up here one for speaker wires one for the power and ground Now that we know our amp is going right here, we can kind of cut these down to size. These definitely don't need to be that long. We will go ahead and prep the ends. Now we have those ready. I'm gonna leave some slack in this power and ground because I haven't decided which way I'm mounting the amp and it's fine. There's plenty of room in this fairing so we're just going to go to about right in here and we'll cut that off okay so where we're at right now is we have all of our ferrules on our speaker wires coming from the lowers those are ready to go so the way this came with no amp it comes out of this uh, high level output right here this comes out of this little plug and play harness so that's just coming from the head unit and going straight to the speakers now we're not going to be using this anymore so we're actually i pulled the uh, heat shrink back and we're going to cut these off both on both sides we're going to use these speaker wires these speaker wires are just going to go to the amp here in just a minute so we pretty well got everything buttoned up here uh, we went ahead and used the same method that uh, vector used in installing a lot of this stuff and securing our wires and that was with hot glue they did have hot glue kind of holding the wires down and stuff just keep stuff from rattling around in there and actually that's pretty genius in my opinion now this style fairing doesn't have a rack inside of it so hot gluing this stuff down into place is going to keep everything from rattling around when we're going down the road now i'm going to throw a graph up here on the screen to kind of explain this because this can kind of look like a uh, rat's nest when you're looking at it like this we are i am going to throw a graph up here real quick and kind of explain this a little bit better just so you guys can see it uh rather than looking at this uh, rat's nest of wires it's very simple coming out of the back of this rca output uh front and rear so it's going to be uh coming into the amp rear front coming out of the amp on the other side back to your speakers so front going back to the fairing rear going down to your lowers uh, setting the gain with this small of an amp and 55 watt speakers you can pretty well set the gain on these amps by ear so what i like to do is take the head unit set everything flat make sure everything on that flat all your bass boost and all that stuff's turned off flatten the entire unit and then we try to find our cleanest signal coming out of this so if this goes up to 40 on the volume knob we, we crawl up to 40 and uh, if we hear distortion at 40 then we need to start backing that down to find our clean signal it was around 35 on this unit so we're going to tune this at uh, 35 volume we make sure that our gains are turned all the way down the gain is not a volume uh, yes it will increase the volume but it also causes distortion uh, you're trying to match the output gain of the unit so make sure our gains are all the way down set our volume at 35 that's our cleanest signal we're going to tune one set at a time so we're going to unplug our lowers 
We're going to leave this plugged in. We're going to come over here to this gain. We're going to set it at flat. And then we're going to start increasing our gain. Increasing our gain at volume 35 until we hear distortion. When we hear distortion, start backing that back down a little bit till you don't hear distortion. Make sure that you use a couple of sample songs. I really highly suggest that you use a little thumb drive to do this with songs on it. A, Bluetooth, you lose signal through that. It's a crap way to tune your speakers. Don't tune with your phone Bluetooth to the unit. Use something that's a direct drive. The radio, mm, that's a little sketchy too because different signals, you know, you're getting different uh, different signals, local area stations, it's just not good. Just use something like a thumb drive so you can have a direct line uh, from your music to the head unit. Try it with several different songs because some songs that you download may be better quality than others. You may get one that you really like and it's not that great of a quality uh, music file and then the next song comes on and it's a like twice the quality. Well, there goes your volume, there goes your distortion. So make sure that you use multiple different songs to test this um turning your gain down until you get rid of the distortion and that's it is what it is at that point once you have your volume set to 35 your cleanest signal set your gain just below distortion that's how loud it's going to be you can't come up here and just increase the gain to get more volume out of it you're going to smoke your speakers once we get that done we unplug the front and then we plug in the lowers and we redo the process again theoretically because this punch and this punch are the same speakers we should be able to set our gains at exactly the same level so i can go ahead and increase it right up to where i had it on this side and just kind of fine tune it from there so from here i'm just going to cut the camera to save a little bit more time i uh, just wanted to show you how we had everything set up but i'm going to get the outer fairing put back on and uh, we'll jump back over and uh, put the inline fuse on the battery back there and then button up the tank and all that good stuff now that we have the fairing back on the front simple guys same way it came off three bolts on each side three across the top windshield over here on the battery we placed our inline fuse closest to the battery we don't want to run our inline fuse up in the fairing we always want it closest to the battery so we're going to tuck this in get all this hooked back up we'll put our tray back on our ecm back on and then we'll reset our tank check check and don't forget last but not least put your main fuse back in then we can set our side covers back on make sure this wire over here is hanging down it goes up to your gauges we're going to set the tank back on and we have to reach under there and plug that back in first we're going to tuck it back up in here between the tank and the shroud and then get our bolts in get that plugged in we can tuck that up in there slide the tank forward into position lift up just a tad wiggle it into place it's important to not tighten any of these down until you get them all into place that way you can shift and move your tank where you need to before we tighten those down just so we don't forget we're going to plug our overflow tube back in plug our molex connector back in plug our fuel back in same thing when you took it off push up on the silver up on the block pull down on the silver make sure it's in place just because you pushed up on that doesn't mean it's locked in got to pull back down on the silver it's almost like a putting a chuck inside of an airline so make sure you pull back down on it pull on the black make sure it's secured I'm gonna go ahead and run these down make sure you're not pinching any wires now i'm quite sure there's somewhere out there there's torque specs for those four bolts to put that tank back on and i'm sure there's a bunch of people out there that's worried about those torque specs i'm not the one ah just messing 15 to 20 foot pounds and also this is kind of off subject here but i learned this the last time i worked on this and kind of had to learn it the hard way a lot of scratching the head and ended up calling the company uh, if you have one of these pingle electric shifters on your bike comes up here got a little control switch up here if you disconnect the battery or pull the wires off of this from the battery and you hook it back up this little guy right here won't work so after downloading the instructions and not really finding anything on it i called them and all you have to do is turn the key on Hold one of the buttons in for about five, six seconds, let go, and then it'll work. Imagine me putting the battery back on this thing and this guy's $1,000 electric shifter didn't work. I freaked out. So just a quick little tip. If you got one of those and you disconnect the battery, got to hold that button. Now we've got everything hooked up. All we got left to do is put the seat on, but I have downloaded some music that I use from Epidemic Sound. I actually pay for that YouTube, so no copyright strikes actually downloaded it to the thumb drive. We're gonna throw it on here. We're just gonna give it a listen to real quick. 
So there you have it, just a little sample of uh, four different genres of music just to hear what it sounds like. And I'll be honest with you, going from a freewheeler that had absolutely no tunes on it whatsoever to what we have right now sounds amazing. And like I said, when you're when we're installing this system too, you can really get crazy with the system. This is a pretty uh, simple, straightforward system with uh, four sets of 55 watt speakers and a 400 times four sets of amp. Now you could really get crazy with this system and put some pro audio in here to 300, 350 watt, six and a half inch speakers with a uh, eight, 800 times four amp. So you can really beef this up even from here. Well, that's pretty much it on the install. Just wanted to show it to you guys, show you how easy it is to add the Batwing fairing, which we did a video on that a couple of weeks ago. So check out the YouTube channel for the Vector Batwing fairing, and then jump over to the Advan Black website and you can see us actually put a crash bar and lowers on this freewheeler because the freewheeler doesn't come with a crash bar either. So you have to add the crash bar and you have to add the lowers and the speaker pods. If you have any questions on this install, you guys know the deal. Comment section down below. I check YouTube every day and I help you the best that I can. Make sure to check out our Facebook group. Jump over to Facebook, add yourself to the group. A lot of great people over there willing to help as well. And also check us out on Instagram. I'm gonna get out of here and get back to work finishing this up. We're gonna get the seat on it, get it all cleaned up for the customer. Hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe and keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the YouTube video, guys. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. Over 100 bagger related videos on our YouTube channel, but to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. Just one of them, not really gonna say anything else, just, just click the button, man, it'll just,